Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom. My girlfriend, again, is out car shopping. And I think she has to go somewhere else this weekend, too. So unfortunately, she's not here with us. We will see her eventually, trust me, folks. Um, I'm here to talk about some Lucha Underground. And I would like to thank everyone for their likes, their shares, their subscribes, and their emails. A um, couple of programming notes. Probably right after I put this episode up, I'm going to put up my predictions. Predictions. Of the all in card that's happening in Chicago. I'm also going to see if I can fit in a live event, a live stream event also. I'm going to post that probably later tonight as, as to when after I get some details. Again, I have my little card for predictions. Or to help me out a little bit. But. Oh, wow. A lot of stuff going on. Um, also, probably next week. Again, show up to Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach at the Multicultural Center on September. On Friday, September the 7th. I had to check out my calendar. Friday, September the 7th. NXT. NXT is coming to town. So that's always a good thing. And Hobo Tom's going to be there. And you want to say hi to the Hobo Tom? I'll even let you have a shout out on my YouTube. If you say, hey, you're Hobo Tom. I'll say, yes, I am. Look confused and say, here, have a shout out. Hi, everyone. And um, for the predictions, I'll probably have my girlfriend on the phone. I'll, I'll think of that soon um also thank you for watching right now let's get to some lucha underground for some reason also well before i do that this whole month of september is going to be a really busy month as far as wrestling goes at least i know friday i'm going to the nxt show and i will post videos that people do enjoy about nxt the following weekend is they go to date city which i might also go see that's on Thursday. And then the next Friday, they go to Sanford, which I also might see. So we'll see. We're going to see a lot of wrestling this month. I'm also going to have a whole, oh, well, uh, I surely have, have some kind of live reaction for Hell in a Cell. It all depends on my work schedule on Sunday. Some days it's good, some days it's, it's not so good. And then at the end of the month, or the really beginning of October, is Woman's Evolution, which I think is the, I want to say it is the pay-per-view for October, and then it goes into November, which means a Survivor Series. The Gobbly Gooker returns. I have to find a picture of that. Should be a that would be a pretty good oh, that's my schedule. That should be a pretty good thumbnail. But let's talk about some lucha under. Wow, I have that many notes. The heck, gee, lucha underground again put on an amazing show again. Um, introduction. Jack Evans is full heel because he came in with a, like a cigarette dang dang from his mouth. Not good. And then there's this Joey wrestling character. I don't know. We'll have to, I, I don't think we've seen him since like season one. But who knows? We will. Everyone gets to, play air, gets to play air guitar at the wedding. Well, the pre-wedding party, except for Ricky. Ricky says no. He gets the moments of being the ring bearer. Yeah, there's this kind of a whole, whole wedding theme going on. That's pretty good. Famous B is now the new ring announcer. Who saw that coming? What happened to Melissa Santos? Melissa? Melissa? She's for where's Melissa Santos at? That doesn't know. She was just in here for a moment. Uh, so our first match of the evening, we have Jake Strong, the savage Jake Strong, versus Drago. And this was a great opening match. Drago still has one of the best costumes ever. And I didn't realize how small Drago is, or how big Jake Strong is, or all the WWE wrestlers are really tall. 
So again, I know Selena Vega is a woman, but darn, she's short. A lot of other women are, are really short when they start comparing them to the guys. But this was a good opening match. I mean, again, you're gonna I'm gonna say your match is good when there's a very good clash of styles. Oh, also, eventually where's that card at? There will be a Southern Pro Lucha Libre show. And I do plan to go there. Where do I put my promo card at? Here's somewhere in the hobo office. Again, one day, I will increase my production value. But again, Southern Pro Lucha Libre is also coming up soon. Um, Go wrestling? Eventually. So, but again, the Jake Strong Drago match. I'm sorry I got sidetracked. Again, it's really fun. Whenever you have a clash of styles, I'm going to say it's a good match, especially when that clash of styles really makes itself shown and is really the main story of the match. I mean, it was it was really good. Anyone that does uh, amateur wrestling knows that changing levels is very important. Does Drago have an advantage being a, a smaller, you know, as a shorter fighter? I would say yes. Why? Because he's going to be able to be quicker, squatting down, getting lower center of gravity, getting behind, escaping a lot quicker. Jake is a big guy. Drago's just in another league. He strikes there by Jake Strong. He backs out of the corner. Drago. Once under the spell of Cobra Moon, once injected with infected venom, I wonder if it's all passed through his system, and the old Drago that we knew and fell in love with is starting to re-emerge. Doesn't look good for Drago. Side control there. Wow. Flip out by Drago. Drago's height came into play there as he ducked the back elbow. Flips off of Jake Strong. Drago's got to make this match move fast. And you can see right now Drago trying to chop down the tree. Ducks the clothesline again. Drago off the move. And Jake just took out the leg. Very, very smart. Uh-oh. And uh, Jake Strong did play collegiate football, so it goes back to what you were saying. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people are going to think that the only pressure Drago is feeling is on his ankle. It's not so. And you can see how Drago's knee is close to his ribcage. That means that Jake is putting all that pressure. Drago can't breathe deep. He can't even think about getting out of that. He's stretching and manipulating the tendons and the ligaments below the knee all the way down to the ankle. That tells me that the man has a plan. He's going to try to break Drago's ankle. I mean, there's good in-ring action. There's good out-of-ring wrestling. I mean, they do things with purpose, and it's good. It's entertaining. Um, Vampiro seems much more composed, and I'm sorry I couldn't do it, but I forgot all about it. It was the Triple Mania. Just go to YouTube, watch the 20 minute poshes. Vampiro loses his freaking mind. It's it's so bad. It's entertaining at least. But he just seems more composed. And every so often, it seems like throwing a pig at Triple Mania. The cat's just staring at me. Again, it was a really good match. And it's like, wow. I mean, Jake Strong put the ankle lock in to finish the match, and he just literally held him in the air by his ankle. I mean, his head and, like, form were on the ground, but that was it. And then Aerostar came in and made the save, which makes sense, because Drago did the same for Aerostar the last episode. And again, it was just really good. 
you know, this is your classic good cheeseburger match. Nothing's wrong with a good cheeseburger. Not so much turf and turf, which we'll see in the next match, but it's a good cheeseburger match nonetheless. But the next match, we're going to have a whole bunch of video clips, so I hope I get the production of this done right. But we have Jack Evans versus Exolicious in a no mas match. And for those of you that don't know what a no mas match means, it's, I know, Spanish for no more. Um, if you're old, like Hobo Tom, uh, it goes back to the famous boxing fight where I want to say it was Robinson versus someone else. I'll look it up and correct myself later. But it was very, it was a very famous, I think, in the ninth round, the one boxer just leaned against the ropes. No moss. Just very simply means no more. And I'll think of the boxers later. That happened, I want to say, in the early 80s, early 80s, late, late, late 70s. Only because I do remember my uncle was talking about it. And I want to say it was Sugar Ray Robinson. There was some other notable fighter. I just it just slips in my mind. But again, the no moss match. Again, the only way to win is that you have to make your opponent say no moss, no more. So in essence, it's an I quit match. Jack Evans is such a great in ring talker. Uh, he's such a heel. I mean, the thing, Jack Evans, you should never smoke a cigarette before a match. Ooh, Jack Evans. But again, he just runs down Exolicious. Exolicious explodes, starts to beat up Jack Evans. I mean, most of the match really takes place outside the ring. I mean, off tables, off stairs, off the ring apron.
man. You know what he said. No, I don't. I didn't hear. Jack said XO, what did he say? I think XO said F you. Okay. I mean, eventually, Exolicious calls, calls Jack a bully. And Jack's like, heck yeah, I'm a bully. I mean, he just embraces that bully role. Whereas in WWE, they always say, oh, well, we don't believe in bullies. And we're not going to use that word unless we're saying this person is being a bully. And we're going to fight the bully. Jack Evans is like, I'm the effing bully in this place. So he embraces it. Again, he embraces that whole heel persona, which is really good. Makes for good wrestling, makes for good storytelling in the ring. And out, and out of the ring. Um, again, just, you have shit, you have, oh yeah, that's right. Chair gets in the ring. Again, just really brawling. Amazing flippy stuff. And then out of nowhere, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's all red, everything, Eva Elise. She gets involved in the match. Actually, now she's wearing red and black. At least she's gone away from that all red, everything, Eva Marie look. Yeah, Eva Marie were all red? Or was it red and white? I don't know. It's a red, bright red hair. So she comes in. Dare I say she stuck her nose where it didn't belong. This has nothing to do with her. Evelise is dispatched. No ticket needed. No. But Jack, wasting his time on Evie, excuse me to say that, gave Exo time to catch his breath and recover and recalculate. Bam. Yes. Back to the arm again. It looks like Exolicious is going back to a classic wrestling strategy. Focus on the body part and try to injure it. Yep, look at Jack, you can't even lift that arm up, so if you're going to throw a big hook punch... I mean, it's hard enough to get up with a broken oh. arm. How about a fight? Oh, oh boy, this is like sweet Jack, right down on his butt. Jack ducks the kick, didn't know that Exo was right behind him, kicked to the spine, and that's going to send shockwaves again down the arms and fingers. And now, Exolicious! Wow! Look at this! Look at that! Some modification on a regal stretch! And then they go into the ring where it really becomes a real submission match, and it's really good. I mean, you see technical moves, uh, um, Gogo Playa, Juju Katami, again, just kind of variations of arm break, of arm bars, leg bars, um, ankle locks. I know there's some technical name for it, just ankle lock. Gogo Playa only because I think even Vampiro referenced that. I think when I did jujitsu for like a couple of months in college, go go play in rear naked chokes called something else. That's a rear naked choke. Um, again, this was really fun. <laughs> Jack Evans said, I'm going to outsource this match. I'm bringing it, Karen. Crowd starts booing the chairs. Like, again, that's a very heel move, bringing a, bringing a weapon into a ring. So, again, I, I fully understand Jack Evans' character. I give Jack Evans' character a double thumbs up. But this match in and of itself was a surf and turf match, though. So it was really fun. It was, it was entertaining. And even Joey Ryan shows up. Look at XO. 
pulled away by Ivelisse as Jack Evans had malintent. Exolicious with a kick to the back of the head. Jack is down. Exolicious, new lease on life. This is Man, wrong. Talk this, us through it. This is wrong. Ah, if he doesn't, if he, oh, he's gonna, it's gonna pop. It's gonna pop. I can see it from here. It's gonna pop. I mean, Joey Ryan, this is a face turn. And Exolicious eventually does get the full arm bar in. Jack Evans says, no loss. Very gravelly, though, so you might say he said something else. We'll see what happens next week. And then I'm just going to show a bunch of videos for this. I kind of tied it together a little bit. I kind of edited it a little bit. So you don't get boring parts. You get I, what I think is the fun parts of it. Um, so we see uh, we see Evans literally pulling himself back. Uh, Johnny Johnny keeps on running down poor Ricky Mundo. Uh, eventually, Ricky releases the monster Matanza. We'll see that come into play later. Famous B is also a minister. One eight hundred Be Famous for weddings too. For an extra charge, he'll bring in Tejano and Dr. Wagner Jr. Dr. Wagner Jr. looks amazing without his mask, though. He, he looks like a freaking Mexican wrestler. Awesome. Again, that's from Triple Mania. There, it seemed to me there were some a lot of Triple Mania digs in this. Again, um, uh, Antonio Cueto comes out. Says, free tacos for everyone. And again, the infamous Triple Mania spot, I think, last year was when Jeff Jerry came out tossing tortillas to everyone. No. <laughs> you have the whole wedding party thing, just to, just to summarize it, I'll, I'll show the videos. You have, again, John Edward Mundo. The cheerleader Melissa, who I've never seen before. Brenda's just way too happy to be there. She's that drunk, drunk bridesmaid who does things in the stage. To various guests, I think. And groomsmen. And uh, Taya Valkyrie. And, and that was really cute. Tag team partners for life. Champion of my heart. Oh. Um. Taya can barely keep a straight face, so she has to work on controlling her facial expression. So it looks like she's either on the verge of smiling or the verge of just freaking out laughing all the time. Then Prenda's way too into that. She was hitting more than champagne there, Vampiro. For her to be that happy about it. Uh, again, he goes into full preacher mode. Watch the videos. Let's just say at the end, no tacos for anyone. And that was really the end. Again, surprise, su surprising but not surprising. You, you know, there's when there's cake. Son, Darío, 
I actually like you too. <laughs> Before you make it official, I wanted to give you a gift from my family to yours. Ring the bell. What do you mean, ring the bell? <laughs> you want tacos? Championship. But not anymore. Babe, the best day of my life is today. My heart is the most epic muscle in my body, and it belongs to you. And I can't wait to buy a house with a white picket fence in Slamtown and begin our lives together. You are truly the perfect woman, and I couldn't be happier than to make you my perfect wife. Heartfelt words from the group. Johnny, do you take time to be your lawfully wedded wife till death do you part from this day forward? I do. Johnny, to be your lawfully wedded husband, from this day forward, till death do you part. See. And now, the presentation of rings. Well, like I said, everybody got a plus one. I guess Ricky's plus one is his dog. I think stag. I'm going to sit at the kitty table like Alex and Grandma's boys. He's cute, but his dolly's too dirty for me. <laughs> Kill your friend. His entire life and style after Johnny Mundo. He's an intern of the Worldwide Underground. 
looks up to Johnny as his hero. I said the rings, dummy, not your stupid dog. Yeah. yeah. Man, everyone treats Ricky Mundo like, like dirt. And the rings for the wedding party only, Ricky. Hit the bricks. Don't make this awkward, bro. Get out of here. You know what I mean? These rings have joined together. Let no man ever tear apart. And by the power vested in me by the state of California and 423 Get Fame, I now pronounce you man. And holy shit, what the hell is that? That's the monster with Montequato. And evidently, the party has been disrupted by an uninvited guest. No tacos for anyone. This wedding party is being completely destroyed as Johnny's checking on his bride. Listen to the congregation. Dude, she, she's bleeding. She's busted she open. Being... Taya? Taya. Taya's busted open. And look at Ricky Mundo. We said how that's Johnny's idol. Why just sit and watch your idol's wedding be destroyed like that? Uh-oh. Oh, no, dude. It's being, it's being destroyed here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's backing up and he's got I mean, it used to be that what would do like something. Antonio Cueto and the late Dario Cueto were able to control th this monster, but now it seems that there's no one that can control Matanza. So maybe it's time. Boy, maybe she it's is the fact that Matanza has ruined her wedding. That's it. Let's go. Good. Come on, girl. Fire up, kid. Oh, no, 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 no. Watch the wheelchair. Wrath of the gods on the bride to be. Brother, she is busted. Johnny is hurt so bad. He's broken on the inside. Ty, good. Please, somebody, go do something, man. Destruction at the hands. And the he's not done. He's not done. Some, someone's going to get destroyed. The, once tables count on foods, you're like, are they really going to have free tacos? Or, again, this is Lucha Underground. I think they did a spot like this, I think, in the WWE, except for it was pancakes, though. Or did they do something with free tacos? Or am I confusing that with Jeff Jared and Impact Wrestling? I don't know. That was Lucha Underground. Fun show. Not a lot of wrestling. But again, it was entertaining, though. Um, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, again, just some quick review of programming notes. I'll also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Very quick programming notes. Um, I'm losing my cable. So I'm going to be watching everything online, which means I'll probably push my videos back a day or so. And it's Labor Day. Happy Labor Day, everyone.
Um, so they're probably Monday. There probably won't be videos. I know I'm going to my girlfriend's. Maybe I'll get her to say fuck thing. Production. Um, then Friday it's NXT for me. Maybe Thursday another NXT. I don't know. I'm kind of stuck working on Thursdays. Um, the following Fridays another NXT event. I hope. On Saturday, I do plan, and I will announce when I do the all-in live stream. Also, sometime next week, probably after my Lucha Underground. That, that's just the way it seems to work out. I'm going to show everyone how the hobo makes a hobo Chicago-style pan pizza. So that's always a good thing. And then eventually, we are going to have some Southern Pro Lucha Libre. I'll find that card again.